Hello guys, welcome to PCGP Presents Tech View, another episode. Uh, this episode is for uh, networking fundamentals and is belongs to the system admin course. So system admin course, we already did two um, session, two lecture, uh, two video. Now this is the third one for networking. So for networking, I'll do two video. So this is the first one. And second, and then I will release the second one. The first one is networking fundamentals. So let's get started. All right, so in this one, this is the syllabus I'm gonna cover, uh, like introduction to basic networking, network cabling, color code, all those stuffs, but uh, it's gonna be, really tough if I go over with the documents or any kind of books. So I I don't want to go over with the books or any documents because it's boring for all the students and it's really hard to understand why I need to discuss the networking because if you want to work as a system admin, you should have some networking knowledge for your work. So basically you're gonna deal with IP configuration for server. So IP configuration for server and also how the network works, you need to know, right? So that's why it's important. So I'm going like really quickly to introduce some devices, hub, gateway, router, repeater, bridge, switch, all those hardware devices is involved to make a network connection. And who manage all those things? Whoever is directly involved with networking team, who is working as a network engineer, they are directly involved with those physical uh, stuff, all physical devices like switch, router, gateway, and also they need to know how to configure them. But as a system admin, if you don't know about it, it's completely okay. You don't need to know. But if you know something about the router, how router is working, and its functionality or something. If you want to, if you are curious about that, you can just Google it and you can get some information. And but if you want to work as a network engineer, then it's definitely you need to know all those things. And also for basic um, fundamentals, like the basic concept, you should have some idea about the network topology. But I'm not going over this. It's your work to know what is the network topology. It's like in book, there is the exist, this is exist, but in reality, when you do any kind of networking, one of any kind of enterprise networking is belongs to one of them. But if you don't know actually directly how it is designed, that's not like make any problem. So at least you can work. But anyway, just for clear concept or understanding, you should just learn this actually, um, or you can just read one time in your entire life, that's also okay. Just need to know what is the network topology, which network topology you're using. And also there's another important thing is OSI model and TCP model. If you work as a network engineer, how all those models is working. But in reality, we never realize, we never feel that how those layer is working. Basically each and everybody, whoever is working in IT or non-IT, it doesn't matter whenever you use internet in your computer on your device, there is some layer, there is a layer, all those layers is definitely working. Otherwise you cannot get connections. So whenever you are able to access internet, that means your connection is maintaining all those model. So WSI model, seven layer and also TCP model, uh, four layer. So, but, you don't need to go with all those models, how it's work, because I don't wanna explain this because if I explain it, you're gonna like right away, you're gonna stop my video. So that's why I'm not going, if you want, if you are curious to know, then you can just Google it and analyze it. You will get some information about that. Was I model and DCPIP model. And also network cabling, this is the cable. So this is important as a system admin, you should know some physical connections, how it look like. And I believe whoever whoever is watching my video right now, you 
are familiar with this cable, the one I'm showing on the screen. This cable, each and everybody, maybe we don't know the name, but each and everybody at your home, you have at least one cable, which is connected with your router. So if you have an internet connection at your home, and if you have a router, definitely have this kind of connections, like cable connection. So at least one connections. It can have multiple connections, but at least one because your router is connected with this. And this one called Ethernet cable. This one called Ethernet cable. And in the on the right side picture, it shows it's, it's the enterprise level switch and a data center and multiple Ethernet cable is connected. So this is called Ethernet cable and that Ethernet cable has a technical name, which is called CAT5, CAT6 is here. CAT5, CAT5E, CAT6, CAT6A, CAT7, CAT8. It's a different, different types of uh, model and based on the model, you can get different, different types of speed you, because that cable, inside the cable, how much speed you're gonna get, that's what it means. And also each and every cable has different, different types of capabilities. So if you want to know CAT5, how much data it can transport. CAT6, how much data it can transport. Just Google it, you can get it because I cannot release all the information in this video because it's gonna be huge. It's gonna be a long video. That's why I don't wanna explain each and every point. I just give you an idea. Okay, and fiber cable. Fiber cable has the uh, more bandwidth or more speed than your ethernet cable. That's the difference. Fiber cable transmit the data through the signal. It's a light signal. It's a light signal, it's signal only, okay? So this is faster and uh, its capacity is huge rather than your ethernet cable. But why all people are not using fiber? We know this is a high speed, but why everybody not using fiber? Because the reason is fiber is expensive. And, and also, also what? So fiber is basically made with glass. Inside it has a fiber glass. It's very thin, but it's a glass. So some it's like most probably when you bend it, it's, it can be broken. So that's why it's risk. Anyway, enterprise level, you see here, this is the data center enterprise level. Actually people use a uh, fiber cable. That's why I'm just trying to introduce. So this is the fiber cable. If there's a single mode, multi-mode fiber cable, you see here. So what it is, you can just uh, you know, like, Multi-mode cable short is a short, it depends on the distance, how long you are placing the cable, right? So based on that, uh, your cable based on the cable size, it can be multi-mode or single mode. And also, this is the connector, fiber connector, and this is the Ethernet cable connector. So Ethernet cable connector called RJ45. You see here, RJ45. This connector is called RJ45, and also. If you guys have a LAN phone at your home, you'll, you'll be able to see there is another connector that's called RJ11, RJ11. But that's all to know about this. And also, definitely in here, there's an eight pin. So eight pin means inside Ethernet cable, there's eight cables, eight cables and eight cables with four pair. So that means two cable in one pair, two cable in one pair, two cable in one pair, right? So that, and this is the color code. So this color code is a standard color code maintained the, in the whole entire world. Entire world networking follows this standard. So I have two, I have 12, four color here, right? So two standard on the left side, five, six, eight, A and five, six, eight, B, two standard. So in the whole world, you can go with any standard. That's not an issue. So if you have a cable, say for example, you're connecting one cable because each one cable has two part, right? So one side is connected with switch, like a data center switch or router switch or somewhere in the where the networking like rack is. So one part of the cable is gonna connect with the switch. Another part of the cable is connected with that, your server or your device or your computer, whatever, right? This is how you can communicate. So to establish a communication, we need a networking. Without networking, we cannot establish communication. That's, I think everybody knows. So in here, um, 568A, some people use it, and this is, that's called a straight connection, straight. That means from server to switch. 
So each cable has two parts, right? Two sides. Each cable, definitely, right? But when you're going to use the straight connections, when are you going to use cross connections? That's the question, right? So the straight connection is whenever it's different device. So one cable is connected with this side is maybe computer and the other side is with the switch, right? So that means switch is different device and um, switch is different device and also what? Your computer is a different device, right? So whenever you have a communication between two different devices, your cable is connected with two different devices, that means definitely is a straight connections. So when you need a cross cable or cross connections, so cross connection is that connection, like whenever a cable is connected with one switch, this part and another part also you're connected with the same kind of switch. So switch to switch, right? Router to router, right? So whenever it's switch to switch, router to router, it's the same device. Whenever it's connected with same device, whenever it's connected with same device, in that time, you should use cross, cross cable. Like for example, you are creating a very small networking, which is just communication between two computers. So you connected two computers with one cable. That means it's called peer-to-peer -peer network, actually. It's a very small network you, you're never going to see, maybe. So, but that kind of, just for understanding, I'm saying that kind of communication, like device to the same device, you need to have a cross cable. But this is the standard followed by entire world. And <clears throat> so the 568B, which is for the straight connection, maximum connection is straight connection, maximum. Maximum connection, you have, you'll have straight connection and both sides, your connectors should have your connector is connected here. You should have this standard, uh, this standard B. Standard B, entire world follows standard B. And standard A also follows some company, but anyway, this is the standard, main standard. So just remember, this is for straight, main standard. This is the cross standard for uh, entire world. So this is what you're gonna see when you cut it, you cut the cable, uh, ethernet cable. Get either it can be get five, get six, get whatever. And this is the RG11 connector. And all those are optical fiber connector, uh, LC connector, FC connector, uh, SC connector, ST connector, right? And also this is very, very important um, SFP connector. So nowadays, before server, all the services come with only one gig. Ethernet connections. Nowadays, some servers or some NIC card built with 10 gig network, NIC card, network card. So one network card can have multiple port. One network card can have multiple port. What does it mean? Let's go to check it out. 10 gig, say for example, 10 gig network card. So you can have 10 gig network card. Uh, you can go with image. I'll show you the difference. All right. You see here, this is a 10 gig network card, but it has four port, but you need to have this kind of SFP Coffer transceiver. If you have this kind of port, one, two, three, four, five, you see here, you cannot directly attach. You cannot, if you have this kind of connections, if you have this kind of connections, you cannot directly connect the Ethernet cable. But so in that case, what are you going to do? You have to purchase trans receiver, which is called SFP copper trans receiver. You see it? Trans receiver has that unit four. If you have one nicker like this, if you have one nicker like this, you have to buy SFP copper adapter for that. And that, that one will, these Ethernet connections will provide you 10 gig. So this is one thing. And without SFP copper Ethernet, you can have different kind of NIC card if your computer is supported, which is, uh, let me show you, maybe this one. 10 gig network, just give one second. Let's say this one, you see here? 
dual port 10G network, dual port, that means it has two port. Some NICAD can have four port, it, it, it depends. So the previous one we saw, it has four port, but this one has two port, 10 gig. So this one, you don't need adapter. It has already adapter inside. You just need to connect the cable, that's it. And this is a SFP fiber transceiver. So there is a, this one also called SFP, this one called SFP, this one also called SFP. So, but you have to remember what it is, right? SFP. This one is SFP fiber, this one is SFP copper, copper connections. So sometimes Ethernet cable, Ethernet connection is called a copper connections. And in a technical word. So difference between SFP plus SFP plus, SFP and SFP plus. So you, you just need to understand what it is. And this is the SFP fiber transceiver. Fiber, that means you can connect, if you have a fiber nick curve, and you should have this transceiver and then you will be able to connect the fiber cable. You see, you remember, I show you the fiber cable, this fiber cable. So for connecting this fiber cable, you need to have a, this kind of transceiver, which is called SFP. So as a system admin, as a system admin or system engineer, if you work in a data center, maybe you have to deal with this. Otherwise you don't need, you have to deal with this or maybe whenever you purchase a server, you have to consider these things. That's why you need to know, SFP or fiber. So fiber is expensive. If you don't have fiber, you, 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 you're you gonna buy, you have a plan, you're gonna buy a server with fiber. But you, before you buy a server with the fiber, I know the fiber connection has a huge speed and you need a huge speed. You are trying to ensure your environment will have um, highest level of speed. But on the other hand, you have to think about, do you have that infrastructure on your networking side? You have to communicate with your networking team. Do you have that, that kind of arrangement or not? And based on that, you can order your server. So if you are a 10 gig SFP cover, so before you order that, you should communicate with your network team. All right, uh, power over ethernet PoE, which is um, power over ethernet. And this one means through the ethernet cable, you can pass that. Power. So for the power, you don't need extra connection. That's what it means. All right. And VLAN, virtual LAN. VLAN means virtual LAN. So what is the VLAN? You cannot understand. I will discuss in, later, in the later session. So and today, now I'll go for um, actually networking IP address. So it's very important for our everybody's life. So if I show you a picture here, uh, Leave all of you guys are able to see it. So this is the picture I draw. If I can relate this one with my house or your house, easily you can understand the enterprise level. Okay. Think about you don't have any idea. You don't know nothing about the networking, but you should um, you should have knowledge or not. Actually, you 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 shouldn't have knowledge. You you don't need to have knowledge. But you should understand actually how the network is working because all the time you are in a network. How? Maybe you don't know. Maybe you didn't never realize it. But when each and everybody, I believe you have a cell phone. And I believe your cell phone is connected with your home Wi-Fi network. So when you are at your home, you are using a, your home or uh, internet, right? home network, right? Because that's why you have internet connection. That's why you have a internet connections. You are able to browse uh, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, or TikTok, whatever, right? So maybe we don't know in our FSM mind, we don't know, we just know we have internet, but how it's working? We never realize it. We never think about it, right? We never think about how we are getting the internet. Behind the scene, there is a router, there is an IP address, there is a subnet mask, there is a default getter, there is a DNS. Everything is working together with maintaining the OSI model or TCP IP model. Whenever you click in your phone, you open the browser and type www.facebook.com or something or google.com, immediately you are getting the Google.com page, right? 
That means what? Within a second or maybe nanosecond, you are getting response because you have an internet connections. But within that second response, there is a lot of stuff happen within a second or less than a second. And also you have a proper networking. That's why you are able to get it. So now today we're gonna learn actually how it happened. So for example, in your home, you have internal connections from Verizon or Comcast, right? So they give you connections and also at your home, if you uh, if you know or if you don't know, if whoever is don't know, please go outside, uh, uh, of, uh, go outside at your house. You're gonna see there is a box, outside box and there is a, and if you open the box, you're gonna see some cable is connected. Maybe it's cable connected to the fiber. In the United States, most of the house is connected with the fiber because already the ISP, whoever is providing the network connections, they are those called ISP. So if it is Verizon, then Verizon will be an your ISP. If Comcast is Comcast, is your ISP, or it can be some other. So they have already cable connection. Some some ISP they don't have a cable connections. Maybe they have an antenna look like a dish antenna. So through the antenna, they have, they're using some satellite system. So through the satellite, they provide you internal connections. But anyway, somewhere they will have a box and that box is connected with their satellite or maybe connected directly with the fiber. So they have that, that arrangement you don't need to know, but from there, somehow they're gonna give you a cable and which is gonna go inside whatever the place you select for them, if you tell them, okay, I want the network connection in my living room, left corner or right corner, whatever the corner you want. So they're gonna give you there. And maybe sometimes they provide you router. So whenever they provide you the router, your router gonna be connected on the first port, which is called internet. And then you will have some other port, okay? So basically most of you, or maybe most, or like most of the people they use uh, Wi-Fi router, they don't know how it's connected because the them Comcast or Verizon, they come and they just connect and they said, okay, your Wi-Fi is ready. This is the Wi-Fi password. And this is your SSID. SSID means your Wi-Fi ID. So based on that, you just connect your phone and you get an internet connection that's, and you are happy, right? But if each and everybody, if you look at, at your phone, your Wi-Fi, right? You go to settings, then your Wi-Fi connections, and then you know which one is your uh, SSID or maybe Wi-Fi name, right? So if you click on the Wi-Fi name and scroll down, you're gonna see a number, IP address. It's called 192.168.1. Blah blah blah, or maybe 192.168.0. Blah blah blah. Most of the case, most of the people has this same kind of network. I am not going to explain right now. Why is 192 why not is different? I'll let you know a couple of minutes later. Okay, so, but if you can look at right now, you, you'll be able to see it. there is a number like this, four digit, uh, four blocks number, 192.168.0 or dot one dot something. <clears throat> okay, so for example, this is your phone, this is your phone, this is your phone, right? So your phone is connected to the Wi-Fi. You have a laptop. Your laptop is connected with the, you have three laptops at your home. All laptops is connected with Wi-Fi. So whenever your devices, why I say devices, because laptop is a device, phone is a device. Whenever your devices is connecting through the Wi-Fi, and Wi-Fi, you see the Wi-Fi connection is dot, 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 like that. That's why I'm just, and this is the cable connection. So whenever your devices is connected with the Wi-Fi, definitely you are getting an IP address. Each and every, each and every, devices is getting the IP address. So for example, this one is getting this IP, maybe this one is getting another IP, maybe this one is getting maybe 22. Uh, so each and every device is getting the IP address. Maybe this one is getting another one, maybe 100, 122, it doesn't matter. So each and every device is gonna get IP address. Who provide the IP address? You put the IP address, no, you didn't, right? So who did it? Your router. Because router has that capability. Router has that feature to provide an IP address. And whenever your device is connecting through the Wi-Fi and your router is giving an IP address, that's called 
DHCP IP, Dynamic Host Control Protocol. How your laptop is getting an IP address? Definitely your laptop is getting an IP address. Whenever you connect to, to the Wi-Fi, you, uh, your cell phone, definitely your cell phone is getting an IP address. Without IP address, your cell phone cannot communicate. That means you, can, you cannot get an internet connection. So whenever you have an IP address, that means your router providing the IP address and how the pro how the, the router is providing IP address to your devices? What is the process called? That's called a DHCP. That means your laptop and router is using dynamic host control protocol. And think about you have TV, right? You have TV one, TV two, TV three. Also, you have a desktop computer. So your desktop is so. Think about your router has three port, right? But you have multiple devices and you want to connect them. You want to connect them through a what? Cable. So using your second port, which is empty, which was empty, now you're just connecting to your TV number two, you connect it, right? And then you're gonna connect to TV number one with, with the other empty one, right? So this one you use. So now this one also block. Now we have one more left. How are we gonna connect to third TV? With this one, right? But if you want to connect with this one, then how are you gonna connect your other two device? You don't have enough free port. So how are you gonna stand the port? How you can increase the port? So you should you should buy another switch. It depends how many port will be your switch. It depends. Switch has eight ports, switch has 16 ports, switch has 24 ports, which is for uh 48 ports. So right? it depends based on your demand, based on your requirement, based on what you need, right? So say for example, you, you process a switch and how your switch is gonna be connect? So first, your switch needs to be connect with the with your router, right? So router, right? so you cannot connect this one with your TV because if you connect it, you will not have enough port. So to get, to provide the internet connection to your switch, you should connect your switch with the router. So the last port you connect like this and on the switch side, you connect it on the port number one. The standard, you can connect any port, but standard to maintain standard, you should connect with the first port. And so the rest of the port, you can you connect your other devices. Say so for example, this one, right? From switch to your TV number three, from switch to your desktop number one, from switch to your desktop number uh, two. So now all of your desktop is getting IP address, all your TV device is getting IP address, right? So how it's happened, how your device is getting the IP address, again, is, through the DHCP. So I believe you guys understand this model, right? This is your home model. But whenever you go out from the home model, because all of you, the reason you are watching this video, because you are trying to learn, and also you have a goal to work as a system administrator, right? So you as a system administrator, your job will be to configure the IP address for the server. And if you want to configure the server, you have to follow this one. I'll show you how you're gonna do that. So internet protocol version of V4 in the network connections, you have to provide right now, we are getting, because by default, our network uh, IP configuration is selected with like this, obtain IP address automatically. That's why you are getting an IP automatically for all of your devices. But on the server, on the server, we're gonna put the fixed IP address. Fixed IP address. Even though we don't know what IP is, right? Uh, if you ask me what is the IP address right now, based on the description, I know, okay, IP means there is a four block number. And this is gonna be provided from, by the net uh, router, but all from router. So router can provide two ways, DHCP or static. OS. Static means manually, whenever you assign an IP address for a device, that's called, main. that's called it static. So if I assign an IP address, say for example, IP number six, I assign it for my desktop and I'm getting this IP from router. Definitely everything I'm getting from router, but this IP I provided here manually, I type it. I type it, that's why it's called manual and this is my desktop IP address, right? So it's a manual, that's why I'm calling it static. So difference between static and dynamic is 
dynamic means is DACP. Dynamic means is DACP. It can be changed. So that means your router has a lease agreement. By default, it's for one week. By default, it's for one week. But in here, it's not for one week. When you were static, that means it's forever. For one week means what? Your laptop is getting connections, right? Think about this. You, this is your, your laptop. This is your friend laptop, right? Sorry, this is your laptop. Think about it. this is your laptop. So you getting IP address too. And your lease agreement is for one week from the router. Just think about it. So if your laptop is, because your laptop are gonna be connected all the time at your home, right? You're not never gonna be have one week gap or two week gap, right? All the time it's gonna be at your home. So your router gonna be, whenever one week is done, gone, uh, finished, still your laptop is connected. So it will be renewed automatically for another week. But you're gonna get the same kind of IP, maybe, maybe. Most probably you're gonna get the same IP because your laptop is all the time connected at your home. But think about your friend. So your friend coming to your house and you rather give the IP address 22, right? IP address number 22. But so, so and also he got the one week, um, one week lease period, right? So whenever your friend leave at your house and he didn't come back within one week, that means this IP address will be free to the router. The router will have this IP as a free IP, right? So whenever your other friends comes to your house within five days or 10 days, actually it's gonna be reserved one week. So after one week, maybe say another friend come to house, say on ninth day, so your router pro will provide this IP to you, another friend, say for example, this friend. And then this friend. And when you this friend come back, when you, this friend come back after 10 days or 11 days, your friend will have different IP, maybe 127. So this is the same friend. When he come first time, his laptop IP was 22, but he, came back again at your home after 10 days or 11 days. Now he got new IPs. Why he didn't get the same IP 122? Because the reason is he missed the lease agreement. And why is the lease agreement? Because the router is providing the IP address by itself. So that's why the router, whenever router is providing the IP address, then that's process called a DSCP dynamic. That means it's gonna be changed, it's gonna be changed. But in real field or enterprise, that this lease agreement is not for a week. It's maybe for four hours, six hours, or 10 hours, or eight hours, like that. That means randomly it's gonna be changed. But why I say in a server environment, in a professional period, why you need to have a static IP? The reason is if, if I can draw something, then maybe it will make sense for you. Let's say, this is the server, right? So think about this is a Facebook server. This is a Facebook server, right? So each and everybody, IT or non-IT, you know, www.facebook.com, that means you wanna see a Facebook interface on your phone or your device, on your laptop, on your whatever, right? Whatever the device you have internet, when you type www.facebook.com, you wanna see through the internet, right? But how you're getting it? In some horror, Facebook has their own data center and inside their data center in some horror, they have a dedicated physical server or maybe it can be virtual server, but there's a server and that server is serving Facebook application. So Facebook application is just not only with one server, maybe it depends on multiple server, but I'm just giving an example. I'm just giving an example. For example, just think Facebook server is running, from, Facebook application is running on a server from a virtual server or physical server, whatever the server is, but that server has an IP address. What? That server has an IP address. So for example, that one has IP address is um, 
55 or something like that, right? So if the, that server gets IP address from their uh, data center router to the DHCP, to the DHCP, which is dynamic, the way you are getting at your home, what's going to be happen? For some reason, because office environment, lease agreement is for four hours, some case one hours, some case it depends on the organization, some case eight hours. But for some reason, if one server is down for some period of time, then the IP will be changed. The router will give next time, say for example, for some reason is failed the lease agreement. Now Facebook is getting the different IP address. 66 is getting the different IP address, 66. Then what, what will be happen? So the story will be changed now. So Facebook application, so now as a user, you don't know, you just all the time you type www.facebook.com, right? That's what you know. You don't know about the IP address. On the background, there is an IP address. But you are expecting when you type, you're going to see Facebook page on your screen, right? But if their server use DACP and somehow if the IP change, because it should be changed, it is dynamic, right? So if it is changed to 66, now their DNS server will not be able to find out actually it's a Facebook. So when you type it, facebook.com, it's not coming up. It says face cannot be displayed. And do you think Facebook will be able to send message to billions of users? Hey, our IP is changed. That's why temporarily our face is not displayed. So within short time, yeah, you should you, actually you should use this IP or we all we are going to uh, change this IP with our DNS name and it will take one hour time. Then after that, you will be able to see it. Is it. Do you think, is it possible to let everybody know? It's not, right? That's why. That's why enterprise level, professional level, all the application, all the server has a static IP. They never use dynamic, static IP. So who use the dynamic IP? If it is small environment the or, or which is not important server or application server. Say for example, your laptop. Your laptop is just for your daily work or your office work. You are just doing working. On your laptop, you just need to have a connection. It's no, like user is not directly, user is not directly access your laptop. You are the user, only one user, right? Your phone, you are the only one user. In that case, DSCP or dynamic host control protocol or, or like a, um, dynamic IP is fine. It, it, IP can be changed, no issues because other user is not involved with your device, right? But if it is an application that is a lot of multiple users is involved with that server, that application server, right? So that's why if it is the application server, definitely you should have a static IP. So it cannot be. So what do we understand? It cannot be uh, DSCP, it, it has to be static. It has to be static. All right. So now we, we need to know actually how it look like. Well, let's start with Excel spreadsheet. So now we're going to learn. Now we're going to learn actually. IP address. I know we don't have any idea about the IP, IP classes or IP address, right? How it look like, right? We don't know. So just think about, um, so we're gonna discuss about IPv4. What are we gonna discuss? IPv4. IPv4, that means internet, Protocol version four in the whole world is running with IPv4 till now. But nowadays, IPv6 also using enterprise level, 
but not that much. Maximum case, most of the application is still running, still configured with IPv4. So that's why I'm going to explain IPv4. So IPv4 is a 32-bit IP address, 32-bit. So what is the 32-bit? We're going to understand very shortly. Believe me, now, at the moment, maybe you don't have any concept about the IP address, but within 10 minutes, you will have a concept. Believe me, I'm going to start. So, class A, class B, and class C, and class D, and class E. So I'm not going over these two because this two is used for special, special case. So I'm going to delete these two classes. So we're going to learn only class A, class B, and class C. So class A, class B, and class C. So there is some, let me have boxes here. Then it's going to be easy for understanding. Border class, I'm going to use some special pick. Okay. This one is very, very important to understand actually IP classes. So IP classes, because the reason I'm showing here, you're gonna see there's an IP address. You see here IP address, IP address. You don't know what it is, what it is you don't know. And also we discuss here 10.15.0 something or 192.16 something, right? But you don't know actually what it is. That's what we're gonna learn here. That's what we're gonna learn in this. So class IP has three classes, actually five classes, but out of five classes, we're gonna discuss about only three classes. If you, if you think, okay, I need to understand this is the class. This is the tutorial you need to learn. I'm going to discuss right now. So from now, just spend 10 minutes. Within 10 minutes, you will be very clear. So class A, a, a class A start from 0 to 127. In between any range, if you see any number, that belongs to class A. And class B is 128 to what? 191. And this one is 192 to 223. So this is the number, if you can remember, that's enough. That's enough for your entire life to identify which one is for what class. But, okay, let me write down the, the other, other thing. Okay, so why I have four, how you know it's gonna give total four. So in the beginning I said, IPv4 means for IPv4 version four, but with the version four is indicating also the block. Block means what? One block, two block, three block, four block. And also, if you look at here, you see here each and every IP, one, two, three, four. If you look at here, each and every IP has a four block, right? If you look at here, one, 10 dot, that means 10 is one block. After dot, 15, right? 15 is another block. After 15, there's a dot and then zero, right? That means this is another block. That is total, here is four block. So IPv4 has only four block, and four, four block means each block indicate eight bits. Each block, each block, each block indicates eight bits. That's why it's called eight bits. Means here is another eight portion. So eight bits makes one octet. So on the other hand, you can say IPv4 is one uh, has four octet. How many octet? Four octet, one octet, two octet, three octet, four octet. And if you can remember four octet, that means you can remember like, at least you can think four blocks, four block, right? Four blocks. So each block has eight bit. So how many bits in IPv4 address? How many bits? 32 bits, right? Because 
So eight, 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 eight. So four times eight makes 32. For eight bits, eight bits, eight bits, eight bits equals to 32 bits, right? 32 bits. Okay. So IPv4 address is 32 bits. That's what we understand, right? And now our confusion is what should be the range for class A? What should be range for class B? What should be range for class C? That's our confusion, right? And that's what I'm gonna discuss right now. So class A, class A, other on the second octet, the range should be zero to two fifty-five. And class and octet third octet. This is the second octet, right? So second octet, third octet, and fourth octet is very easy to remember. It is zero to two fifty-five. That means. There is nothing exists over 255 in the world. That's for sure. So the highest maximum number should be 255. Nothing is possible over this. And then 0 to 255. So I can copy it over all. So that's the standard for class A, class B, class C. That means what? First octet range, any number in between 0 to 127 is belongs to class A. Any class, so for undefined, for identifying, for identifying class, which, which IP is this, right? For example, you have an IP, say 88, Okay, let, let me, let me, let me have another one for just giving you an example. One, two, three, four. So let's take this four block. Four block, okay, I block. Four block B. Also, you can have 28. Okay, and this block, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a different, different color. Okay, actually the color is here. What is the color? Okay, here. Say for example, the first one is like this. The second one is different color. This and third one is different color. This and fourth one is maybe, oh, sorry, this one make a different one. Uh, no. Okay, and this one is this color. Okay, so four color, four octet, or four block, or you can say something number dot, something number dot, something number dot, something. That means four octet, which is IPv4. This is the format, 32 bits. Just for example, just to understand. Okay, before I go with this, I'm going to give you some uh, information, which which is there's some rules whoever invent this classification so entire world is following that those rules to to um, declare class a class b and class c so class a supposed to start with zero and end with 127 but it cannot why because Zero cannot be starting as a network. So mandatory, but computer always count start from zero, right? But whenever you specify your zero as a network, you cannot start with zero. That's why it should be one. And also there's another important information, which is 127 cannot be a network, starting network. So that's why, because this one is used for, say for example, one IP address is starting for 127, right? One IP address is start with 127. So I give you an example. If you start with zero, say for example, I said, I said like from zero to 127, any number, any number, say for example, zero dot, 25 dot, 55 dot, zero, or maybe say, five, six. 
So it cannot be an IP address. And we know based on our description, I said any value on the first octet or first block, if you see something starting with in any if any number starting with in this range, so zero in zero is belongs to in this range, right? So whenever zero is in this range, that means this IP, this is the IP address, right? 0 0.25.55.6. It seems like it's look like it's an IP address, right? But it cannot be an IP address. Why? The reason is, and, and also we know this IP address belongs to class A. We know this is an IP address format. And also based on the first octet, we know this is the range in between 0 to 127. So 0 is in between that. It meets the criteria. So we can say this is an IP, IPv4 address or IP address, and it's a class A IP address, right? But it cannot. Why? Because you cannot start with zero. You can never, because the, uh, in IPv, in class A, first octet, first octet uh, work as a network ID. So first octet work as a network ID, so a network cannot be zero. Network cannot be zero. So you must, you have to start with one. Must start with one. So now this can be an IP address. Now I'm going to discuss about the last one, last octet. So there is a condition on first octet and last octet. So the last octet, you see a zero. So do you think, okay, this one is one. So 125, 25.55. Uh, uh, so 25 means is in between zero to two fifty any number, right? Any number. So twenty five is 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 in between this range, right? Fifty five in between this range, right? It can be zero, not an issue. It can be zero, not an issue. And also six in between this, right? But if you start here zero, what gonna be happen? Do you think this is an IP address? So this one is directly mentioning your host. Host means your device. Your device means your laptop or your mobile phone or your cell phone or whatever, whatever the device, any device. So zero cannot be an host number. That's why you must start with here one at least. You must start with one. So that means what this statement also not true, right? So the last octet range should be started with one to 255. So I believe all of you understand now this condition. So for class A, first octet should be okay. So, and also I said 127 cannot be, it's not, uh, the condition is not finished yet. 127, right? So 127.0.55.1 is an IP address. Definitely it's an IP address, but you cannot use it as an IP. Address. So zero, right? Here zero. And also this one is, you can use as a zero, right? Zero is also. Zero is also belongs to the third after zero. Zero is also thus in the range, right? You can have zero, one, or one, or one, or it can be two, or it can be three, it can be four, it can be five, it can be six, it can be seven, it can be eight, anything it can be, because third octet is, is range is zero to 255. Any number you can put it here, right? And this one is one, right? But you cannot use this one because this one work as this one used for loopback. So that, that IP is uh, work as a loopback IP. So loopback means each and every device has this IP. You never gonna see it, but your laptop, your desktop, your server, everything has this IP address just for self-test. That's why it's called a loopback IP. That's called a loopback IP. So you cannot use it, that's the restriction. So if it is a restriction, that means this is not true statement, right? So it's going to be 126. So now what we get? Highest, we can go 126. So the second octet and third octet is very simple, very easy to remember. Is no doubt the range is 0 to 255. Any number, any number in between. And... So, and this one, also, you know, this one, right? And this one, let me start. Okay, actually, it should be like this. Yeah, so now this is the right statement. 
Okay, so any number, how are you gonna know this is class A or class B or class C? If you see any number in between this, so you're gonna see, okay, this is class A. So if you see something, say for example, if you see any number, say, um, and that one in nine. So this is also, this is also class. So, so this is a class B. How you know this is a class B? So for undefining a class, you don't need to think about other three octet. You don't need to consider or you don't need to think. To identify actually which class is this. If you see any IP address in any where, how you can decide this is class A or class B or class C. So our this tutorial is just uh, is just for identifying which class is this. That's it. And next class, I will teach you guys actually some other rules and also subnetting. But in here, if you understand at least, okay, I know right now which is which one will be class A, which one will be class B, which one will be class C. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. So class A, class B, and class C, right? So 129, I told you guys, right? 129, that means with the first octet, you need to consider actually this number is belongs to which range. So is it is it between one to 126? What do you think? No, right? Is it between 192 to 223? No. Is it? In between 128 to 191 in this number, this number, yes, right? 129 here, right? So that means what? This is class B. And the second octet is zero, it can be zero, right? Or it can be five. This can be uh, 244. It doesn't matter, right? Because 244 is also in between this, right? This one can be maybe, so it, it can be like this, right? <clears throat> but this is a class B. Now if I say, okay, this is 180. So if the first octet is 180, which class is this? You don't need to consider the other three. Just look at for this one to identify which class, which class is this? So 180, that means 180 belongs to here, right, this class B. But if I say, okay, it is um, 100, 199, 199. So 199 is class B or class A? Actually it's not class A. Why? Because it's not in between one to 126 number. This is higher than that, right? 199 is higher than this, right? That means it's not class A. And then one, 28 to 191, we know this is class B. If we found any number in between on the first octet, that will be class B. But 199 is not in between range of 128 to 191. That means it's not class B. Now look at for class C, 192 to 223, right? And 199 is belongs to this, right? How? Because it's in that range in between that range right 199 is between in this range so we can say this is a class c ip address so i believe all of you guys now very clear very clear to identify the ip classes it's not done yet so we're gonna have another video which is class less ip what, what is the subnet mask? What is the default gateway? What is the DNS? Alternate DNS? Primary DNS? And what is the slash or something? So all those things we're gonna learn in our next video. And, and that's all in this tutorial, in this lecture, I just want to confirm, are you able to Find out now, after completing this, are you able to find out class A and class B and class C? If it is yes, that I'm, 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 that means I'm able to teach you and that's my success if I'm able to. And if it's not, then it's my fault. 
<clears throat> anyway, um, anyway, if you like this video, please don't forget to uh, give a big thumbs up and also please make some comments. It will encourage me to make more videos for you. And also, if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. Thank you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.